Thanks, Mac. Appreciate everybody being here today. Um, before we begin, there's a few people I'd like to recognize uh, just who helped with the process. Uh, certainly Dr. Fox, who is a tremendous supporter and leader for this university and our athletic program, and uh, he was unbelievable uh, during this process. Uh, my uh, team that kind of helped with the search from the UAA side, Laird Veach, Linda Teeler, Steve McLean, Mike Hill. Uh, we had several other members of our UAA staff who assisted with planning and logistics throughout the process. Um, one of the things that makes this place really special is the people. And we, I tell people, we are like the Yankees. We attract the best and the brightest. And we've got an unbelievable staff who support us during this process. Uh, we had the wonderful opportunity to access a lot of talented minds in the sport of football, one of whom happens to reside uh, one floor above me, and that's Coach Steve Spurrier, who was an awesome resource during the process as well. So these last few weeks, we've conducted a comprehensive search to identify the next head coach of the Florida Gators. And the search uh, included countless conversations with people throughout college football and a thorough review of all kinds of information, including data analytics on numerous candidates. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, there were some key traits that we were looking for in our new head coach. One, somebody with a strong work ethic, someone who had a great competitive drive, uh, someone who had a high level of intelligence and could figure things out, uh, and most importantly, somebody who had leadership ability at a high level. Dan Mullen embodies these traits, and I'm convinced he is ready for the challenges ahead with the Florida Gators. You know, from a football standpoint, the decision to hire Dan was very easy. However, because of where he was and my connections to Mississippi State, I was only going to hire Dan if I felt he was unquestionably the right person for the job. We had several intriguing and qualified options, but in the end, I strongly believe Dan is the most prepared candidate to have an immediate and long-term success here at Florida, and he is the best choice to lead the University of Florida football program. You know, Dan is one of the best offensive minds in all of college football. He has an unbelievable track record developing what's the most important position on the field, the quarterback position. You look at guys like Alex Smith, who was number one overall draft pick, Chris Leak and Tim Tebow here at the University of Florida, and guys like Dak Prescott and Nick Fitzgerald at Mississippi State. Dan is going to do a tremendous job of implementing accountability and toughness through a well-coordinated strength and conditioning program. He's going to work closely with our coaching staff, our academic advising staff, our administrative team to give every student athlete he coaches the opportunity to grow and excel at the highest level athletically, academically, and socially. Obviously, Dan understands the opportunity the University of Florida presents to create a championship experience with integrity. Having served here for four years as offensive coordinator, during which time the Gators won two SEC and two national championships. Dan also understands the responsibilities of leading an SEC program, having led Mississippi State to unprecedented success during his nine years there. I also know that Dan is one of the more creative and innovative minds in all of college football and will embrace the public role of being the head coach at the University of Florida very well. He knows that a big part of the championship experience should be about fun. Fun for the players, fun for the staff, fun for the student body, and fun for Gator Nation. You know, the University of Florida is a top 10 public university. We have a top 10 athletic program, and we will soon have a championship caliber football program. It is my great pleasure to introduce the new head football coach of the Florida Gators, Dan Mullen. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I want to thank, thank Scott uh, for believing in me, uh, believing, I, I think, when you're at the University of Florida, uh, you have the opportunity to hire uh, just about anybody in the country. You're at, at the premier football program uh, in America, uh, and it shows an awful lot for the belief that he has in me and the style of football program uh, that I run uh, to give me this opportunity to come here and be a part of the unbelievable uh, Gator Nation and the Gator family and be a part of this football program uh, and and lead this football program into the future. Um, 
There's a lot of people. I, obviously, I, I, I want to thank. I want to thank my wife Megan and and Cannon and Breland. Uh, I know they're very very excited to be here, and um, you know, and, and being a coach is a, a very difficult profession. You know, uh, the you want to ask the, the the first staff person there is the assistant head coach is my wife, uh, because of the commitment level that it takes to run a football program, to make an impact on all of these young people's lives, both on and off the field. We have, we have a great responsibility uh, as parents send their children to us, not just to develop them as football players, uh, but to help develop them as men. And, and I know Megan is uh, truly committed to helping develop all of these uh, young men that come to the University of Florida into becoming champions, not just in football, to becoming champions in life, to working as hard as they can every day to be the best that they can be both on and off the field. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Fox for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, and, and, and help this lead this program. And I just told him, and uh, my commitment to him is to make sure that the university, uh, the, not just the university administration, the university as a whole, the student body, the alumni, and the fans have a football team that they're proud of both on and off the field. And how we carry ourselves every single Saturday in the fall but also how we carry ourselves 365 days a year representing um, this great university. Uh, I know it's great to see Coach Spurrier, and I, I, I saw Jerry in the back. Uh, you know, here, um, might not know this, as a young coach, started coaching a long time ago now. And, um, you know, I was used to, uh, you know, my first coaching job was a small school called Wagner College in Staten Island, New York. And, you know, I always grew up a huge fan and was always a huge Florida Gator fan. And so what do you do if you're a Florida Gator fan and you're going to start coaching? You start wearing the visor. So I guess everybody sees me with my visor on. Uh, I don't know if I wear it quite as stylishly as Coach did. Uh, you know, but – and I, I've also been known to throw one of them every once in a while every uh, <laughs> out there. But that's, that's really the reason I started doing that in the first place. And it's unbelievable to be, to be here to think that I'm, I'm carrying on or I'm, I'm – uh, tasked with the responsibility of carrying on with the traditions that he has started and so many of the former players started here uh, that he built here as a coach and an unbelievable honor and responsibility that is. I know there's a lot of, I saw Scott Brantley, uh, I said Shane was here, there's a bunch of former players uh, that are here um, and I want them to understand, I, I understand the responsibility of what it is. I understand the pride of what it takes uh, to represent the University of Florida. Uh, the pride of what it is to have that Gators helmet and put that on. And I want to make sure, and I will promise them, I'll make sure every single player that does wear that helmet, that does put on that uniform, understands the pride and the responsibility they have to what that stands for now and what it stands for, what it has been built throughout the years, and how it has built up and the responsibility they have to carry on that tradition. I want you to know that there's an unbelievable standard of excellence here at the University of Florida both in the classroom as a premier academic institution and on the athletic fields, not just in football, but in all sports. Um, I accept that. I was very fortunate to have been here, uh, to win two national championships as an assistant coach here and know how special this university is and how special it can be and how special a team that we can have. And I can promise you I will give relentless effort in everything I do to make sure that we return the football program to a national championship level. That's what it's all about for us here, um, is to be judged and win championships at the University of Florida, and I'm committed to doing that. If you see our team play, you're going to see a team that plays, as I talk with relentless effort. That's what's most important to me. I think a lot of people are very concerned with the offense that you run, the defense that we run. Are we blitzing on third down? Are we going to, are we going to, how much pressure are we going to show on first down? Are we going to, you know, are we playing man or are we playing zone? How many snaps a game are we in the shotgun or under center? How many times do we throw it or how many do we run? I'm going to be honest with you, that's going to change from one year to the next, as it always does, based on the type of players that we have and the, that, that are in the program. And we're going to put our guys in a position to do what they do best and put them in a position to be successful. That's the responsibility of the coaches as we come up schematically and put plans together. Uh, we'll base ourselves, obviously, out of a spread offense, which is um, something I believe in. Um, but my definition of a spread offense might be different than others. I want to spread the field and make sure you defend sideline to sideline the entire field. I want to make sure you defend all 11 guys that are out there on the field, and I want to put as much pressure on the defense as possible. Defensively, I want to put as much pressure on the offense as possible. And an attacking sound style of defense is going to be fast, physical, and aggressive in everything that we do. Uh, but most importantly, 
every Saturday when you walk into the swamp or you turn us on on the road is you will see a team that plays with relentless effort from the first snap to the last, a team that plays with a passion for the game of football and everything that they do, whether the 11 guys are on the field or the guys standing behind them on the sidelines, that there will be an energy and an excitement and a passion about this team and a demand of relentless effort, relentless effort competing in everything that we do from the opening kick to the final whistle of every single game that you'll see a team. Uh, my expectations is to be the hardest playing team in the country. I don't know if we'll be the biggest. I don't know if we'll be the fastest. Hopefully some years we're both. Other years maybe we'll just be the fastest. But I do know this. We will be the hardest playing team every single Saturday when we take that field. That's something that I'm going to demand of our players. Um, so fun to be back. It is so fun to be back. I want to thank, I do want to thank everybody um, here. Uh, it's great to see familiar faces. It's great for me walking around and getting accustomed to where I'm going again. And, you know, I've, I've opened a wrong door already once or twice, and, but I'm starting to get my, my, my bearings back within the building. And, um, and it's great to see all those people, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I want to thank, um, I, do, I, I was very fortunate. I do thank everybody uh, at, at Mississippi State University for the opportunities that, that they gave me there. Um, I, and there was a great administration, uh, great athletic director, uh, great president, and great people there in a great community that embraced it and believed in me. And, um, and moving forward, I hope that they continue to have the success that, they, that has been built up over the last several years and that they, uh, they continue to build that program in the right direction. Um, but on to here. And I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be your coach. I'm thrilled to represent this university. I'm thrilled to represent all the students, the faculty, every Saturday on the football field. I'm thrilled to represent the fan base. I'm thrilled to represent the state of Florida uh, as the premier university in this state and all of these people in this state and the Gator Nation everywhere to be your football coach and to give you a team that you're going to be proud of every single Saturday in the fall. So thank you so much. I'd love to take Steve. going to open up for some questions. Then you've had opportunities in the past. Why this one? Why now? And you know, did you think it would come three years ago? No, I I, I think um, when you look at all the opportunities in the past, I think timing is there a lot. There's a lot of timing in life, uh, in what what goes on in your life. And I know Megan and I uh, have worked really hard um, over the last nine years at, at, at a football program of building it up. Uh, and we certainly were ready, ready and excited for a new challenge. Uh, and that's something we discussed and that we talked about. Uh, that we, we, were, we were in, in, in a good situation, uh, but we were ready and excited for a new challenge. And when the opportunity comes uh, to come to the University of Florida, uh, I, I don't know if there's anywhere I'd rather be than here. Uh, I don't know if there's a better job in America than here. Uh, you know, a, a, when you have that opportunity, uh, you, you can't pass up the opportunity to come to the premier program in the country. Yeah, Dan, can you just talk about how you, you think you've changed in the last nine years? I mean, obviously, some, from when you walked out the door here to, to when you walked back in. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've changed in, every, in basically every aspect of my life, I think, changed. I think as a coach, one of the things, and in, in, in even in life, you're, you're, you're getting better or you're getting worse every single day. So uh, I'm going to be changed. I'll be a different coach tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be a better coach tomorrow than I am today. You're always working to do that. But uh, over the last nine years, I, I left here nine years ago. Um, I was an offensive coordinator uh, from, from a great team. Uh, I went down, and I, and I can tell you, um, first thing I did, I was named head coach. We did the, all the, the media, the press, you know, the introductions, all of these things. I walked into an office, sat down in the chair, and I went, what do I do now? <laughs> um, and uh, because I don't think there's anything. You know, I worked working here for Urban Meyer, and I think he, he always does a fabulous job of preparing his assistant coaches for that responsibility. But there's nothing that can prepare you for that responsibility of sitting in that chair, uh, of being the head coach. And, um, you know, so over the last nine years, uh, I've tried to, to look at what I've done well, what I've done poorly every day. How can I improve from year to year, whether it is uh, in every aspect of the coaching profession? 
of how can I continue to improve, how can I continue to be better. Uh, and, uh, you know, over that time, you gain that experience of there's always going to be something new come across your desk that you haven't dealt with before. But I'm going to tell you, I think over those nine years, you've dealt with so many different issues and so many different things that have happened that you're prepared to handle just about whatever is going to get pushed across your desk um, and be able to handle it in the right way, in the right representation of the university and the football program and what we believe in. Did you, did you feel differently when you sat down in the, that seat up there today? Uh, very different. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I sat down with an enormous smile on my face, you know, um, uh, and, and couldn't be happier to be here. But I also sat down understanding the enormous responsibility of the people that have sat in that chair before me uh, and the standard that they've set. And uh, if you know anything about me, I'm extremely competitive. I love that challenge. Um, you know, uh, you know, whether it's, it's, it's me out there on the field coaching our teams on a Saturday, going out, going out for a jog. You know, or if Coach Spurrier invites me out to play golf, I might, you know, make sure there's not a lot of, cam like, cameras videotaping because it could get maybe heated. There would be a little, because I know he's a little competitive as well. Um, no, but I think that competition, that, that just drives you, and that's the excitement of being in that position. But also, though, the comfort of knowing that, you know, of, of the experience that I've had over the last nine years of that it's, it's not the first time that I'm dealing with a lot of different situations, uh, that I've been in, in, in a lot of these situations before, um, and the experience to know how to handle um, what you're dealing with on a daily basis. Dan, yeah. what was your message to the players today? Uh, you know what? It, it just started I, I, uh, very friendly. We're going to have another in-depth team meeting later on when I really get in-depth to our, our expectations and, and the standards and the details of it. Uh, but, but very, very simple of, of what they expect. I, I, number one, I, I, to be honest with you, I started with academics. We have classes end next week. Uh, then we have final exams, and there's, there's a certain standard that I expect in the classroom, you know, and explain to them that, that being a champion is not a sometimes thing. Uh, it's a way of life. It's who you are. And that gets to competing, you know. And I don't care if, if, if you're competing out there on the football field, you're competing in the weight room, you're competing in conditioning. But, you know, when you walk in the classroom, they also put a number on the top of that test. And you compete. They might not, you might not cover, you know, um, Math 101 test scores. And, um, you know, they might not be on the ticker. But someone wins and someone loses. And we're going to be a team that competes in everything that we do. And you better take that seriously uh, and making sure that we are that mindset, that we're competing as much in the classroom as we are going to compete on the field. And we're just going to be competitors uh, in life. And so uh, it started there. And um, went into just some of my general expectations on our core values, uh, on decision making. Um, and uh, I told them to rest up over the month of December, because when they come back in January, it's probably going to be something they've never even experienced in their life before, our off-season conditioning program. And Scott also, uh, Scott has talked about putting the fun back in Florida football. How do you do that? You know what? I, every day is fun. Every day is fun. I mean, I, I hope. I, I certainly hope every one of those guys loves playing ball. I mean, you know, I mean, I, the, fun, the fun is there's a lot of different ways to have fun. The fun in preparation you know, and knowing that you're working hard to prepare, the fun in the classroom of taking care of your business and being successful that way. But, man, we get on that football field every day. That's what it's about, you know. I mean, we're going out there to practice. But that should be the, the, the best two hours of your day every single day. You're out there playing ball, having a great time, flying around, complete, competing, playing football. And if that's not fun, um, you're here for all the wrong reasons being part of this program, you know. Like I said, I mean, we're, we're going to – we're going to try to go score some points. I know how important offense – trust me, I mean, I, I, know, I know how important offense is here. Uh, I've been here and know what that's all about. And, and I, I know everybody likes to score some points. Uh, and we're – I'll be honest with you. And, and, you know, Coach Burr might argue with me. I don't know if there's anybody in this room that likes scoring points more than me. I love scoring points. You know what I mean? I, right? I, I'll, I, we can score 100. I'll keep going. I, I love scoring points. That's fun. Um, but I love guys playing hard every single day and playing and reaching their potential and achieving their goals. And so that's, that's what we learn at football, and that's, that's what is fun, is going out there competing every day to be the best you can be. Ryan, over to the right, Coach. Going back to your comments about how special of a job this is, in the back of your mind, were you always hoping this would come to fruition at some point in your career? And then can you, what can you share about the process of how it did come about here in the last few days? 
yeah, you know what? You, you never know in your career. You know, I mean, I, I think every day, I, I never thought of, thought of, okay, this is where I have to, I, 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 I'm going to end up. or Because, you know, that's not always stuff you control. I've always been someone, I, I try to worry about what you control. Um, and, you know, and, and every day wake up and control and be the best coach I can be. Um, every single day because I can control that. I can't control everything else. Um, but I know, um, I think Friday afternoon, uh, Scott reached out to me and, um, you know, and just said, hey, I just want to touch base with you to see if, if uh, you, you'd be interested in speaking to me about the, uh, the position here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I said, yeah, we, uh, you know, uh, maybe different than, than some things because Scott and I have worked together before. So, uh, you know, I mean, the initial phone call, like the formality is, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Scott Strickland. I, I'm going to introduce myself to you. Um, you know, the, it, probably a different maybe than some introductory phone calls. And um, and I said, absolutely, I, I'd be interested in, in, in speaking to you. If, if um, But, you know, I, I, a lot of the conversation came. I said, hey, you know, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a good situation. Uh, I'm not actively out pursuing jobs, and um, but the opportunity to come coach – here at the University of Florida, something that would that would uh, really interest me, and um, he said, "Great." And I know he had a lot going on. There was still a game to be played, and uh, then uh, you know I was I was sitting watching games on Saturday, and um, trying to. You know, I love watching ball, so I was watching some of the games, and uh, you know, I, all of a sudden I pick up my phone, and there's Scott, and he said. Um, uh, we spent some more time on the phone together, and we said, uh, you know, I, I would like to, to move this forward and, um, and, and get serious about it. And so we had several different conversations, really, the rest of the day uh, and that night um, into, into the, to both of us making sure uh, that we were both comfortable, that, you know, we were both comfortable with me being the head coach here um, and, and the standards of expectations and what we, we, we expect out of each other. Um, you know, because I think we, we have a great working relationship and we've worked well together before um, of just understanding how, how it's, how it's going to work here and that, that we're both a great fit together. And uh, I think Saturday night when we decided that would be the case, uh, I think we both felt great about it. And I think even more importantly, I think we both woke up Saturday Sunday morning and felt even better about it, you know, because sometimes, you know, I, I, I wanted to make sure I woke up Sunday morning and I was, I was even more excited than I was Saturday night. And I was. Uh, I couldn't wait to get going, and fortunately, I woke up, and there was already a missed call from Scott Strickland, and he was still really excited about me coming. So, uh, we met at work. Maybe it's too soon, but what's your sense for what you're inheriting here? Um, you know what? One of the hard thing is I, I don't know because we, we, you know, I, I didn't we didn't play against Florida last year, and and really didn't see a lot of crossover film on them. Um, so, you know. I, the great thing about that is I'm not judging anything, you know. When we get back, I'm going to look at the grades from this semester. Uh, that's going to be a really big factor for me to start with the team, uh, number one. And then number two is uh, everybody in my book has a clean slate to go prove themselves. I, I told the team um, I chose them. They didn't choose me. I chose them. And I, I guaranteed them that, that um, I will earn their respect. But I promised them. They will earn my respect as well before they're able to put on that uniform and go represent our, our university out there on that football field. And that was very, very important to me. And that's going to be done with, through academics and through the effort they start giving in the, in the offseason. And everyone has a, has a clean slate to go start over and, and show what they can be. Yeah, Dan. Uh, so I think UF's had two losing seasons since 1980, and they're both in the last five years. Just how big a task is ahead for for you, just to get the program back to the elite level? Well, I I, I think you know uh, for us, it, it, there's a mindset, you know, there's a mindset and a standard of expectation here that, uh, and you know that I think that's one that's one of the reasons I'm here, um, you know, when that happens, things things weren't where everybody think the program wasn't at the expectation level. Um, of the fan base, of, of, of everybody involved in the, in the Gator Nation. And so that's why I'm here. And that's the challenge for me. I love challenges. You know, I absolutely love it. Um, and I have as high of expectations as anybody in this room for what this program is going to be like. You know, and people ask for timetables. I, I have high expectations for next season. 
I, I do. And I have no idea what type of team we've had. I haven't seen anybody even play or take a snap or run one step or tackle anybody. But I promise you, I have extremely high expectations for our program next season, and I'll continue to have them from one year to the next. Uh, it, it's, an inch, it's a new challenge uh, for all, everybody in college football because we have an early signing day coming up. And recruiting is, is the lifeblood of the program. You know, and, uh, you know when, I, when I was here uh, 10 years ago, we were blessed to have some truly spectacular players. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's fun calling plays when, when Tim Tebow is your quarterback. Um, you know, and he's throwing the ball out to a, to a Percy Harvin, you know, or, or a, Lewis May, a Lewis Murphy or a Bubba Caldwell, right? You know, and, and the defensive guys, when you have, you have a, a, a Joe Hayden out there covering people, um, uh, a Brandon Spikes hitting people at linebacker. And, and you look at the, the, some of the talent we had here uh, was special, and we got to do a great job recruiting to get, the, get that level of player uh, back here to lead us back to championships. And, you know, two different men have stood in the same spot you have over the past seven years, expect, having big plans and expectations. W what makes you feel like this is going to be different because uh, you, you know the culture here, the expectations, your quarterback development? What, what things would you put pinpoint? Well, I, I, think, I think everything, how we run the program. I think uh, – I think I have a, a, a pretty successful plan of how we organize and how we run our program from top to bottom. Um, I also, I, I've been very fortunate throughout my coaching career, and I understand it's a, there's an outline. There's not a defined book or a plan. It's an outline. And that outline uh, of, of what you do within your program is very flexible from one program to the next. Uh, I, I was blessed during my coaching career um, to be one of the first guys hired by Urban Meyer at Bowling Green, uh, State University, one of the first guys hired at the University of Utah, one of the first guys hired at the University of Florida, and then go take over my own program and see how the outline works and how you can apply the outline, but also during that time frame to understand that the specifics change depending on the school that you're at, depending on the environment that you're at and how you apply that outline to be successful. So I, I think the outline works. Um, the great thing is I have experience and know how some of the particulars of that outline are going to work here at this program. Um, we are at a, a place where we're gonna ha we have unbelievable facilities. I know where there's plans for even better facilities to be the premier, uh, to have the premier facilities in America. We have an unbelievable, passionate fan base. Uh, we have a, a, a tremendous winning tradition, and we're in a state surrounded by great high school football players uh, that we can go get. You know, and also uh, when you have that Gator on your chest. Every, every, just about every player in the country wants to listen to what you have to say because of what this program represents and the history of the program and what was built here before us. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to come in and we're going to take the guys that are here. We can't wait to see them. I saw there are a lot of excited faces in that team meeting today. Uh, you know, I think guys that uh, are, are probably ready to get to work ready to get going and now that have to actually take a little bit of a break um, before that starts cranking up and they're going to buy in and we'll, we'll make sure they buy into our program 100% uh, to perform out there on the field and then you know we're going to put a staff together to go re recruit not just great football players but extremely high character guys that, that want, have a tremendous work ethic and a desire to improve and be developed throughout their career. Um, those are the type of players we're looking for here at the University of Florida and we're going to go make sure we get them, get them here and develop them um, to the levels that we expect to win at. Dan, can you discuss just kind of your philosophy uh, in, in the quarterback recruiting? Obviously, as a spread coach, a lot of people just assume that dual threat is what you go for, but you've had, you've signed and started pro style quarterbacks before. How will you go just about evaluating the talent and then kind of going from there? Well, you know what is really important is winning. Uh, you know, I. I have enough offensive background. I think we, we can create an offense around some skill sets of quarterbacks because if you look at all the different quarterbacks that I've had throughout the years, there's, there's not a prototype. They're all different shapes and sizes um, with, with different skill sets, and we've still been successful with them. Uh, so to me, number one, it starts with mental and physical toughness uh, because that's the guy that is, is the leader of your program. And, uh, you know, and they have to, you know, play, playing quarterback here um, – at the University of Florida, is th those are pretty big shoes to fill, right? There's a couple of really nice trophies that they give out for the play uh, of quarterbacks that have been here. Um, there's there's a, a couple of championship trophies that they expect the quarter that that our quarterbacks expect to lead us to. 
that are here in this building. And so they have to understand that, have that mental and physical toughness um, to be able to handle what it takes to be here uh, and to lead this team and set that standard and set that bar extremely high for our players. They have to have tremendous leadership. You know, a quarterback's the leader. If, if you take everybody, if you took a football team and I took a bunch of guys and recruits and put them in the room, okay, and, and we take a signing class and none of them know each other, okay, and everybody gets up and says, hey, I'm so-and-so and this is the position I play, and I hand them a piece of paper, I said, okay, vote for our leader. They're going to vote the quarterback. So you have to be a tremendous leader. I want somebody that, you know what, when that team walks into the huddle, all they're looking at is saying, hey, we have him so we can win. We have him so we can win. Yeah, after that, you go to decision making, which I think is one of the hardest things to evaluate at the quarterback position, which is processing of information. How fast can they process information? How fast can it go from their eyes to their brain to their arms uh, or their legs or whatever decision they have to make? Because, you know, it, it's one thing talking about football or drawing up plays on a board. But when you have about 1.2 seconds before a 300-pound guy is about to hit you right in the face, it's really important how fast you can process everything that's going on out there on that field. And so that's critical. Intelligence is extremely important. The smarter the quarterbacks are, the more we can do. You know, I'd, I'd rather them not look over to the sidelines after they say hut. I'd rather them already know what they're checking to do and they already know what to do instead of, you know, hut, hut, and just look for me to go do it for them. You know, I want, I want them to know what to do out there on the field. Um, then I get into throwing and running. You know, throwing's more important than running, or you can have everybody just standing on the line of scrimmage. You got to be able to throw accuracy um, over anything else because you want to be accurate with your throws. And then if, if you can run, that's a bonus because that means you can improvise and make some special things happen when the play breaks down. Um, but I have a different way of maybe looking at quarterbacks and trying to find them. And uh, if, if you want to put it in one word, it's winners. Okay, because every quarterback that I've had has been they're a winner. You know, I mean, you want to go, go take Alex Smith out of the Kansas City Chiefs, he's probably running a corporation somewhere, or he's a doctor or a lawyer. You want to take, take Tim Tebow? I mean, I, if you want to describe Tim Tebow in a word, a lot of people, he, winner's going to be up there. You know, there's not much he's going to be able to do that he doesn't win at. Um, you know, and so Chris Leak was a winner here for us, one. Uh, Dak Prescott's a winner. And, it, and it's not just at football. They're, they're, that's their personalities in life, that whatever they're going to do, they're going to be successful at. Sam, over to the left. Dan, you said uh, that you feel like you've changed and developed in the nine years since you've been here. There's been a lot of talk around here about the white-hot intensity of this particular job that you have. Is it something that you discussed with Scott, with your family, talked to Urban about? Uh, did you have any, and I know the fan base in Starkville is certainly rabid, but it did it. <laughs> Is it something that can, can prepare you for this? And is it something that you talk to your family about, talk to Scott, maybe talk to Steve? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I discuss with everybody, and I understand it. I, I've been a head coach in the Southeastern Conference now for nine years. Uh, and I understand the scrutiny that you're under here and the expectation of a fan base. Um, it, it's a lot of places in this league, you know. Um, I, I will say, you know, I, I think the passion here, uh, is not unique to the University of Florida when you talk in terms of Southeastern Conference football. Um, to plug the network, the, it just means more. Um, it's a way of life. It does. It just means more. Uh, and people that haven't been involved in it might not understand that. Uh, but having been an assistant coach in this league for four years and a head coach in this league for nine years, I certainly understand, uh, you know, and having a lot of friends in this profession and friends at other schools. And, you know, you do have a, a, a camaraderie with other coaches. And as you talk and you discuss, you under, you, I, have, I have a perfect understanding of the scrutiny, uh, the attention that you're under, your family's under, and the pressures that you're under um, with the expectations to su succeed um, when you're a coach in the Southeastern Conference. Dan, one of the things that Scott mentioned in introducing you was your track record with quarterbacks. Developing a quarterback is something that hasn't happened here since you left. What do you attribute the track record that you've had and the success uh, to? Um, a lot of people. I, you know, I, I just – when I started coaching, I kept a – I had a folder as an assistant coach, you know, I mean, of uh, things I would do the same or differently. Um, and – with every program that I was at. I studied it a lot. Uh, I studied the game a lot. I'd study different quarterbacks a lot. I'd read a lot of just different quarterback technique books and all of those things. Um, 
and to be honest with you, there, there's no substitute for experience. You know, I was very fortunate. I got to start at, at Bowling Green State University where um, nothing against the Mid-American Conference, but you're not under that scrutiny that you're under here. And so you can make some mistakes in coaching there. Um, and I, I sure, I'm sure I've made, made, made plenty. And, and probably the biggest thing I can attribute my development of quarterbacks to and who I've learned the most from is my quarterbacks, you know, is from, you know, uh, being a young coach and getting fired up on the sidelines. I'll always still remember this day of Josh Harris, the quarterback of Bowling Green, looking at me and I'm, I'm going off. And he's like, are you going to stop yelling? He's like, I want to win more than you do. So if you don't have anything productive to say, you might as well just shut up right now. <laughs> okay. And I learned that day. I learned that day because I was getting emotional about it. Wait, we have to, you know, instead of coaching. And you know what? He wants to win. Everybody wants to win. The, the players, they compete to win. And so I learned that day, you know, and I, and I constantly even learn to this day. I mean, I, I'll, I'll call Alex Smith. I'll, I'll call Dak Prescott. I'll say, okay, you know, hey, what's Coach Reed teaching you? What's, what's Coach Reed teaching you, you know? Um, what's Coach Lenahan at the Cowboys? What, what, what are you getting into? What, Coach Wilson, what, what are the, all the guys at the Cowboys? What's their staff teaching you, okay, that I'm not missing? Is there anything new that you're learning? Anything new that you're doing? Anything that you're doing on your own or you've learned to help yourself out that I can use and put in my toolbox to help coach and develop these quarterbacks? Uh, you know, and, and I've been very fortunate to coach guys that have that belief and they're committed to develop. You know, I listen, I, you can't just rate. I mean, I've I've been a, I've been very fortunate to coach very talented guys, but even with that, you just can't wave a wand and fix anybody. I've coached guys that were committed to excellence, committed every day to being the absolute best that they can be, and those guys are fun to coach. And you know what? And and if you hire somebody that is committed to being the best you can be and with an unbelievable work ethic, you're going to constantly improve. And and I've been fortunate to coach those guys uh, that have that have had that desire to improve. Dan, now that, you've, now that you've taken the job here, what's your immediate priority in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks when it comes to staff hires, recruiting, that kind of thing? Uh, recruiting is going to take go over the top of everything, you know what I mean? I'm going to evaluate some of the staff that's here. I'm sure uh, we're going to have some staff changes, uh, you know, and, and none of that is going to be finalized. Uh, really probably till after the new year, you know, it, it, with, with everything going on, uh, till we can get our, 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 our final staff in, in place, if you will. But um, most important to me right now is recruiting, is touching base with all the, the players that are committed, all the players that we're recruiting, and, and getting on the road and, and getting um, players in here that can help us win championships. And then you mentioned some of your former players from your previous stint here. How, how big of an emphasis will you put on kind of getting those guys back involved in the program? Well, I, that, I mean, that, that is, that's critical to our success, you know, is uh, there's nobody that knows the standards and expectations um, of Florida football than the former players. You know, that you're talking about guys that have sacrificed four and five years, that completely committed themselves to excellence on that field, that took pride in, in wearing that helmet and wearing that jersey, um, you know, and, and – I know, we, I know we have an unbelievably passionate fan base, but I'm going to tell you, those guys um, that have done it, that have been here, that have put this program where it is, those guys, you know, are even more passionate about it, uh, and they understand it. And so it's critical to have them around, have them around uh, our players, um, and have them there to lean on for advice but also to have them around to make sure that our players understand what the standard of expectations are here at the University of Florida. Mike, straight in the back. Yeah, Coach, you call this the best job in America mm -hmm. right here, the best right, job in I'll America. You. There you go. Oh. How important is it for the coach to be at a program, at a job that he cherishes, he wants, he desires? Um, and also, you were at Mississippi State for nine years, just developing some coaching stability here. Well, I, I do. I, I was very fortunate. I, I think a lot of the success of Mississippi State was based on stability, of based on having a, a, an administration, um, both athletic and university administration, that were well aligned, that we had a plan, and were aligned on how to accomplish the goals we wanted to accomplish. Um, you know, and, and uh, we weren't perfect the whole time there. We had some ups and downs, uh, probably a lot more ups, I think, than downs historically. Uh, 
but we had everybody in alignment and there was great stability and everybody understood what, what our vision and what our focus was on how to get us and how to succeed in the future. Um, so I think that is important. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think as a coach, you put so much into it, uh, you know, to me. I mean, it, it is, uh, you know, I, 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 have, I have two responsibilities, you know, my family and this football program. Um, those are my responsibilities in life, and you put so much into it uh, that I, I don't know how you could be at a place you don't, don't love and you're not excited about being. And, you know, uh, for me to be here at, at a dream job, you know, I mean, of, you know, when you're 15, 14, 15 years old watching Florida play and, you know, I'll always remember that Thanksgiving game weekend. I, I grew up in New Hampshire, so it's snowing and it's freezing cold outside and there's Coach Spurrier with his visor on in the sunshine and it's beautiful. And what am I doing here in New Hampshire? And, uh, <laughs> uh, but to see that and have that opportunity to live that dream is, is just something special. And you know what? So it uh, makes it pretty easy for me to get up every morning and completely commit myself to the success of this program because I'm here living my dream and I get to do it. And it makes it pretty easy to get up and be motivated to go do that. Three real quick ones. One, when Jeff Collins came here, you referred to it as a lateral move. Was that kind of coach speak or? Yeah, I, you know. I'm pretty passionate about everywhere I'm at, you know. <laughs> Secondly, what's your policy on practice and uh, open to the media or fans? Uh, we're we're going to look into that um, at different times. And I think one of the things, and, I, and I'm going to work with everybody on it, uh, different times a year we'll have different policies. Uh, you know, I, I would imagine this spring it's going to be we'll have open practices just so everybody can get accustomed to us. Uh, and us as a football program, but but different times and different years and different teams. You know, my 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 responsibility is to get the team prepared. So, you know, when you have open practices to both media and fans, sometimes that can become a distraction. And uh, I know for for the fans and for the media, you might view it differently, but it becomes a distraction for the team. And I have to do what's best to get this team prepared to go play uh, and do what's best for the program. So. Um, I'll, I'm going to work with everybody on that one, and, and we'll have, you know what, and it, it might change from year to year or, or preseason to spring ball to different times during game weeks. It'll, it'll always change depending on what I, what I feel is going to be in the best interest of the football team. And third, there's only about 20 people that care about the answer to this question in here. Do you allow your freshmen to talk to the media? Uh, after they play a game. Beautiful. You know, and uh, so once they play in a game, you know, I, I, I think you have to – like anybody, I, I think, you know, and getting in and, and standing up in front of the media and addressing the program, uh, and, and you, you are representing not just, just our current football team, you're representing all of the, the football players and, and, and Gators everywhere. So I want to make sure you've earned that right to step on the field, that you've earned that right and you've played on that field and you've been out there uh, and at least sacrifice a little bit on game day before you get up and, and are able to – share whatever you have to share with the media. Well, Pat hit one of them, and I don't want to be a buzzkill because <laughs> we're glad to have you back and uh, enjoyed the press conference. But one other thing, much has been made about your better half's comments about yeah. the, the unrealistic expectations of the fan base. I mean, what would you just say just to kind of move beyond that and get that out of the way? Well, no, I'm, I'm going to say, I think, you know, as you look at quotes, and obviously, you know, uh, in the media, that was taken in the context, the context of talking about the pressures of what it is to be a wife of a coach in the Southeastern Conference. And, you know, so, and I think as Megan addressed it, as, you know what, I, we certainly understand the pressures and expectations and standards here of what it is to be the head coach at the University of Florida, because we understood what it was even to be a coordinator here. And I know that, uh, you know, I, I can guarantee you this. I mean, if, if, if Megan didn't pick Florida, we wouldn't be at Florida. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I think I'm a good coach, and I think I'm smart in some ways, but I definitely am smart enough to know that, you know, that that – that that decision is certainly coming from the top down. You know, I th this can be this can be my dream all I want, uh, but that decision is coming from the top down. And so, uh, you know, I, I think I think it just shows that that 
she does. I think she, we loved our time here when we were here before. Uh, I, I know the whole family, we can't be th more thrilled to be back here. Um, and I think we do, you know, and understand what it is, um, the lifestyle we're walking into um, here as a family. And it does, and it takes, it takes a toll. I, I, I think coaches everywhere. I think one of the hardest things people don't realize is coaches ever, you know, I'm, I'll be in here early in the morning and I'll be here till late at night and I'm worried about our guys playing hard at practice and watching film. Uh, I'm not always out at the grocery stores. You know, I'm not always out around town. I'm not in, in, in school picking up the kids in line. I'm not, you know, the kids going to school and, uh, you know, and, and they're around uh, the, the passionate fan base a lot more maybe than I am on a daily basis. And I think that they certainly understand what it is and, and the expectations that people have here um, as the football coach. And I think, uh, I think one thing I will say this is that uh, for Gators everywhere, you know, and, and it'll happen pretty quickly, they'll realize, you know, hey, we really would like coach to come meet with this group or we'd like Dan to come speak to this group and then That'll turn very quickly to we'd much rather have Megan come speak because uh, everybody likes her a lot more than, than you. So uh, we want to have her around and, and have her be involved with everything in the program because um, I, I will say this, she, she does understand and she understands her responsibility in here um, and the importance um, of her role within this program. And, uh, and, and this is, a, this is a, a, a family decision and it's a family position being a head football coach. Uh, at the University of Florida, at a, at a school of this magnitude, uh, is a family job, and I know she's more prepared than any, anybody I know. Good answer. <laughs> but in one other player yeah. discipline, I mean, it's been a challenge in the SEC, and uh, including here this year. I mean, the, the credit card issue that kind of derailed the season before it even started. What, what kind of tone do you want to set? What are your expectations there? And are you driving that message home immediately with these guys, given they're going to have a lot of time on their hands coming up? A absolutely. We addressed some of that today. You know, discipline's really, really is important to me. And um, as a program uh, and doing things right now, uh, I'm someone that's going to handle every – I don't have a book that I just go rely on. Uh, I want to handle every incident individually because uh, there's usually more to the story than just this one thing happened. Uh, I like to find out what happened, uh, find out why it happened, and find out what the effect is, the, the, what the effect on that young person's life is when, as, we're, as we're applying discipline. And, you know, it, a lot comes to is it a mistake or is, is it a core value issue? Is it a problem that this young, you know, I mean, is, uh, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody in life makes mistakes. And our job, these are, you know, I think people look at a lot of these athletes, uh, especially college football players, and they're, they're put on a pretty big pedestal and they're in a pretty big spotlight. And I think a lot of people forget sometimes they're 18 to 22-year-olds. Okay, and I think if everybody in this room can think of their time in college and can probably pick out one or two things that they probably made a couple of poor decisions in college. Um, I can, but I'm not going to get into the specifics of those at this time. And... Uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, one of the things for me is, is it a mistake or was that a core value issue? You know, I mean, or was it something that you intentionally went out to do the wrong thing? Um, that's a much bigger problem. Um, but I know that um, I'll always investigate everything thoroughly and handle discipline um, pretty severely because I think it's important for our team to have understand the, the standards and expectations uh, of this team. You know, I told Dr. Fox I'm going to give him, him and, and the Gator Nation a team that they can be proud of both on and off the field. That's how we carry ourselves 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just on Saturdays. And, you know, you have a great responsibility when you're going to be a, a, a member of this football program. And it, and it carries beyond this field. And it, it, it might be a greater responsibility than the regular student body has. You know, you might have to, you're living under different expectations and different standards um, than other people, but that, that's part of the responsibility of wearing that uniform and being a part of this program. Jeff, uh, final question, Andrew, and then Jordan up front. Uh, you mentioned Coach Spurrier a few times today. How do you plan to take advantage of having him in the offices, you know, seek his input on X's and O's, running the program, stuff like that? Um, I, I I got to go up in his office today, and he got his, he's got he's got he's got the computer open. He's got game film up, so 
I love ball. He loves ball. So I don't think that's going to be much. Well, I'm sure we'll have some really interesting ball decisions in there uh, talking football. So um, it's unbelievable to have somebody of, of, of that knowledge. You know, it, not, not, to me, it's unbelievable. Not just somebody uh, to have the football knowledge that he has, uh, be able to come in and talk about it. Uh, the head coaching knowledge he has and dealing with situations and player issues throughout the year. Um, but even more importantly, that's someone that, that loves the University of Florida through and through um, and understands everything about this program and, and this university and what it stands for. Uh, so as a head coach, to have that there, have that with you, have that available with you, uh, I, think it's all, I think it's fantastic, you know. I mean, I, I'd be shocked if I don't come in for practice and I don't have a, you know, well, why aren't we doing this, right? <laughs> I'd be disappointed if I didn't have, you know what I mean? I mean, to have somebody there, it, it, you, I, I don't know if there's a place in the country where you can have somebody uh, with the experience and knowledge that he has um, that's, when I walked, right upstairs from me, that wants to be around the program, wants to be involved in the program, and loves everything about the program. Um, you know, I feel blessed. I've, I've, I've known Coach since I was here as an assistant coach. Um, I want to tell you the first time you go walk into the SEC meetings. Um, and there, believe it or not, there are, with the head coaches meeting, when you get there to the SEC meetings, there are an ego. There's some egos in that room. Um, you wouldn't think that, but there are a couple. You know, I've been coached nice enough to pull up a chair and say, hey, Dan, come sit next to me right here. And I sat down next to him at that meeting. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, that's he probably doesn't remember that, but that's something that you remember as a young coach of people that help and mentor you. And, uh, and I continue, uh, hopefully, to, uh, to continue to be mentored by him. Two quick ones. First, you mentioned that the staff probably won't be finalized till the first of the year, but do you have a short list, especially of coordinators that you have in mind? Yes, I do. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll have some of that done sooner rather than later to get some of our coordinators in place. And, uh, you know, I think we'll have some assistant coaches in place over the next two weeks, uh, you know, and then, uh, but, and then finalize it possibly after bowl games because a lot of people still playing football right now. And then secondly, I know it's a ways away, but September 29th, you'll be going back to Starkville to play them. Just what is that going to be like in – how do you feel that's going to play out? <laughs> um, you know, uh, that'll be a tough, tough game. Um, uh, emotional in some ways uh, to, have, to have to go back there. You know what I mean? And uh, to be honest with you, uh, in, in to me, I'm a competitor. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about us winning. Uh, that's it. But, you know, emotional when you look across the field and, you, you know, the, the personal relationships that you have with every one of those players that are out there uh, on the field. Um, you know, and, and those guys and, and knowing what they've gone through, the hard work they've put in to get to this stage in their life and what a lot of them maybe have overcome in their life to get there. Uh, so I think that'll be emotional, uh, emotional that way to have to, to go against them. But, you know, um, concern number one is going to be winning the football game. Thanks. Welcome back, Dan. Thank uh, you. You said you learned from your quarterbacks. You must have learned from Tim Tebow. What did he tell you about this job, and what advice did he have for you? Have you talked to him last couple of days? Um, you know what? I, I have. I talked to him. Um, I think as it progressed Saturday afternoon, I talked to him. But you know what? Um, Tim was unbelievable. You know what I mean? I, Tim's, Tim's like a family member to me, you know, in, in our family. I, I mean, every Thanksgiving, I mean, we, we've had – He's at my house when I was here every Thanksgiving. He was at dinner for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so he's, he's kind of a family member. Even back Cannon, we've, I found a way, right, to get old NCAA football on eBay to play on the computer. And knowing Tim is a competitor, Tim was over the house with the SEC Nation one night, and all I heard Cannon saying is, Tim, you threw another pick. And uh, <laughs> Tim was like, I don't, you know, he started yelling at the game. So... <laughs> uh, but to know him. But you know what? I, I think Tim, Tim loves the University of Florida, knows how special a place it is. Um, but also more of our discussion was not about that, was what's best for me and the family. And really that was more of the discussion than how great a place Florida is and, you know, what, what we can accomplish here and all of those things. It, it was much more based off of, uh, you know, uh, discussion about, 
what's best for for me and what's best for for Megan and the kids and the family. And that's just because the, the that type of that relationship um, that that Tim and I have and we have with the family. So it's it goes way beyond football that that relationship. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Look forward to working with you all. Go Gators.